to introduce the Humorous Speech Contest Coastmaster, who tonight is John Labby. John Labby, DTM, has been an active member of Toastmasters since 2004. He has served District 30 in many different leadership roles and has enjoyed presenting the District 30 conferences several times. John currently is serving as president of Toastmasters Plus and is a member of Career Communicators, both of which meet in Palatine, Illinois. And so to help us start this humorous speech contest, please help me welcome John Levy. Good evening, District 30! Thank you, Tom, for that great introduction. I could not have written it more succinctly myself. It's great to be here. And to be quite honest, I realize that the International Speech Contest is maybe a sexy one, because you get to go on to Vegas or wherever the big Kahuna convention is. This is my favorite. And rather than try to do a couple minutes of stand up and impress you, what I'd like to do is ask everyone who has ever competed in an area contest or higher in the humorous speech contest, please stand and be recognized as the funny people in the world.
manager, Dustin Cochran, is still here. Our finance manager, Beth Reed. Our host, Northwest Division Director, Sean Siegel. Thank you. 
before, there will be one minute of silence between each contestant. At the conclusion of each contestant's speech, Congress, if you would please keep track of that time and signal me one way or another, jumping jacks, green card, uh, when that one minute is up so that we can move on to our next contestant. Let us begin. Contestant number one, Geraldine Chancanello. Uh, before I begin, and I apologize for realizing this only at this minute, the contestants asked that I give them a little bit more room. So if you don't mind, I'm going to move my office. Without <laughs> <laughs> spilling the water. Geraldine, I apologize for the break. Contestant number one. Geraldine Chancanelli. Is a tornado that bad? Is a tornado that bad? Geraldine Chancanelli. Come back up. Kind of goes in a loop in your head over and over again. That was 
on that elevator for 15 minutes, it felt like two hours. So if you ever get stuck on an elevator, just times your minutes by a couple hours, and that's what it feels like. You'll be fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Third floor finally opened up. The power went back on. I jumped off. I ran up to my room. I put my key in that door. Peace. Sleep. Serenity is here. Finally, I can go to bed. I opened up my door, and I was excited. Oh, my room. Love it. I walked in, past the bathroom, and all of a sudden was coming right back. No. No. There was a naked man on my bed. <laughs> There's no chocolate. There's no flowers. It's not for <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. They must have double booked their room. I'm so sorry. I ran out. I ran back downstairs thinking, I get back down there. There's chaos going on. I finally get my new room. I go upstairs, and again, I get my key. Peace, sleep, serenity. I clicked that key so fast. I was excited because I knew what was coming next. I bet. Check to make sure there was nobody in it this time. <laughs> <laughs> it's just me. I never went to bed so quick in my whole entire life because all I thought about was this day is over. Tomorrow has to be better. Can't be worse than this. I was okay, I thought. I went to sleep so fast, I woke up the next morning, brought a bushy tail, got myself ready. Today's a new day, I'm gonna be good, it's gonna be a great day. I get on that elevator, those doors are about to close. And who shoves his arm in the door? <laughs> Naked man. <laughs> Contestant number two, <clears throat> Francesca Pepiat, a rational fear, a rational fear, Francesca Pepiat. What is the 
fashion fear. Do you have one? Fear of spiders, snakes, speaking in public, scary clowns, good clowns, any kind of clown? Well, actually, I have an irrational fear, an irrational fear of sharks. Now, you might say to yourself, that's not irrational. Sharks are very dangerous and very scary. But that's only if you live in the ocean or go in the ocean. I grew up in Westchester, New York, and there ain't no sharks in the Hudson River. <laughs> the closest I came to a shark was the West Side Story, singing and dancing variety. <laughs> da -da, da -da -da. <laughs> then Jaws came out, and we were all scared of sharks. So, fast forward, I decide I want a career in television. So what does that entail? It entails moving to Los Angeles, California, right next to the Pacific Ocean, which houses <laughs> what do I do to avoid that? I completely ignore it and focus on what's really important, television. So, I worked in various television shows over the years. It was very exciting. One particular show was called Pathfinders. Now, the concept of this show was to take people who were successful in their careers and take them on these crazy adventures. Whitewater rafting in the Snake River, dog sledding in the North Pole, and some of the people were so incredible. You know, we had Dr. Heimlich, you know, <laughs> you know, the maneuver guy. And very famous authors like Amy Tan and, and Isabel Allende and, and uh, Mrs. Fields. There is, in fact, a lady behind the Cookie Kingdom. If you didn't know that, there is. So, one of the episodes, we have a very famous golf course designer and a female comedian. Now, the female comedian, I don't know if you're familiar with or remember, Elaine Boozler. Awesome. Woo! I was a huge fan. So I was so excited she was going to be on the show. Anyway, each of these celebrities get to bring a guest with them. But unfortunately, Elaine's guests couldn't have any scheduling and they weren't going to be able to come on this trip. So she was going to back out. I'm like, no, oh no, please, you can't back out. So the executive producer says, You there, I want you. He what? Yes, you. I want you to go on the trip with her because you've got a similar sense of humor. I'm like, I'm going to trip with my favorite comedian. So we're going to go kayaking in the Sea of Cortez. <coughs> yeah, at that point, did not make the connection. So we're at the airport in LAX, getting ready to get on the plane to go to La Paz, Mexico. I meet her for the first time, my favorite comedian. We're getting to sit next to each other. We're chatting the whole way on the plane and getting to be best friends. When we get off the plane, I mean, people think I've known this woman for my whole life. It was so thrilling. Until we start packing the boat. Huh? Oh, yeah. We're going to an island? Oh, yeah. I forgot that part. Huh. Okay. So we're in the boat. We're traveling towards the island. <laughs> trying to be calm. We're getting closer and closer. We drop anchor in the lagoon. <laughs> we take a little teeny tiny boat with all our supplies onto the island. <laughs> I really have made a terrible error in judgment here. So, not to look like a big old baby, I try to go casually to the tour instructor and say, huh, just curious. Uh, what's the shark situation here? Just out of, you know, knowledge. And he says, oh, yeah, yeah, you don't have to worry about sharks. That's fine. Because the thing you got to worry about are stingrays. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, they burrow under the sand, so when you're walking around in shallow water, you can step right on one, and they'll kill you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> on this trip is we're going to get to swim with sea lions. What? Okay, this is so awesome. I may be terrified of sharks, but I love the water. So we take the boat again out to a sea lion rookery. And the helpful tour guide says, if you want the sea lions to play with you, you just spin around in the water. I'm all over this. So I'm spinning in the water, and the sea lions are swimming on my body, jumping over, back and forth over top of me. I'm like, this is so awesome. They're even like trying to freak me out and do a ah sight. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. It's totally, totally amazing. So we're on the boat back, going back to the island. And I'm thinking, this is the most incredible experience I've ever had. And then it hits me. Oh, you know what a shark's favorite food is? Sea lion. Yeah. I can swim in them a shark buffet table. 
would just pause. <laughs> And he would revel in anticipation because for the next 10 hours, he was going to let all of that breathe. <laughs> I can see this like it happened yesterday. Standing there. His bald head reflecting the lights of the ceiling. He had a farmer's tan from the shirt sleeves down and the neck up just beat red. Everything else, everything else was a pearly, translucent white. On his chest, he had two bluebirds tattooed, a match set, bright blue. And it always fascinated me because they had this way of smiling at each other and at you. <laughs> so after taking that deep breath, he would then proceed through the house. Now he had this way of walking, always on the balls of his feet, like he was trying to catch his balance. So he would then... <laughs>
and it had sat abandoned for years. And while we could live on the inside, on the outside it still looked deserted, peeling paint, broken boards, overgrown bushes. So my mom, you could see it on her face, I want this. <laughs> I lost track of the adults after that, went back to my programs, but later that summer, we got it. <laughs> my mom was ecstatic. It's tan. You can wash it with a garden hose. It's still on the house today. <laughs> I'm almost certain that guy got the salesman of the month. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably like, who else sold to a naked guy? Tell me that. <laughs> and I think about that all the time. And I find it interesting that for my family, that was strangely normal. And I also understand why no one ever sat in the dance chair. <laughs> so if we could have a moment, one minute of quiet. Contestant number four, Mark Groves. Handy man. Handy man, Mark Groves. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters, and welcome guests. The only part of Handyman that applies to me is man. <laughs> I am admittedly not a handy person, and I take great pride in that. I've got ten of these. Ten of them. In fact, if you do an internet search for the term all thumbs, you'll see my picture along with my fingers wrapped in bandages. This all started when I was. 10, 11 years old, my father was working on a major project at our home. And he asked me to go into the garage and get a sledgehammer. Actually, he accompanied me to the garage and pointed out, that's the sledgehammer. I picked it up, lost the grip, fell on my foot, and broke two toes. <laughs> In high school, we had to take shop classes. There was metal shop auto shop, and wood shop. This involved the extensive use of tools. <laughs> tools? I don't know a screw hammer from a frame stand. In metal shop, we all had to make this uh, rectangular shaped box. It was about like, it was metal, and it was rectangular, had a lid, lid. I made an ashtray. <laughs> In auto shop, the carburetor that I was leaning over and working on caught fire. <laughs> and in wood shop, after many cuts and slices and abrasions, I made another ashtray. <laughs> My last year of high school, I was approached by the owner of a shoe repair shop to become an apprentice. The owner, Italian born, master craftsman, made his own shoes was going to pay me $5 a week to learn to craft. Oh boy. 
This involved the use of various sized sharp knives and a stitching machine, a loud stitching machine that stitched the sole on the bottom of the shoe, and a nail driving machine that hammered nails into the heel of the shoe. Well, after many failures, and having purchased the economy-sized bottle of Bactine, <laughs> along with bandages and gauze and all sorts of first aid stuff, the owner suggested that I look into attending college. <laughs> Some years ago, my mother, Chicago born and raised city girl, bought a 10 acre farm at in rural Wisconsin. There was an old shed on the building that she wanted to use for chickens, but it was kind of dilapidated. I inspected it, drove 10 miles to a hardware store and picked up roofing paper and nails. Came back, climbed the ladder, got on top of that shed and promptly fell right through. <laughs> but I finished that project. I was not deterred. I finished it. The next day it rained. And the day after that, I finished that project again. <laughs> My male friends have fun kidding me about how inept I am at repairing things. We might all be out for breakfast. One of them will talk about a home project that he's working on. And invariably, one of the other guys will say, Hey, why don't you have Mark help you with that? <laughs> this is followed by raucous laughter. <laughs> Recently, I tried to repair the garage door opener at my house. You know the button you push inside the garage? It lowers in the garage door. My garage door was stuck in the upright position. First thing I did was shut off the power. I learned that the hard way. <laughs> I disassembled the unit, took the plate off, rewired everything, put it back on, put the power back on, pushed the button, and the garage door came down. Then it went up again. Then it went down. <laughs> then it went up again. I can really repair something. There are some things that I can fix. Really? This is largely due to the fact that duct tape now comes in a variety of colors. <laughs> My wife has come to accept the fact that I am not a handy person. And that there's normally some injury or avoided warranty associated with any project. But she has an interesting approach. I'll begin the project. She'll get out her cell phone. <laughs> As I begin, she'll push 9-1 <laughs> and wait for the inevitable. <laughs> we don't have a first aid kit in our home. We've devoted a small closet to housing medical supplies that would rival any <laughs> I understand that the word handyman does not apply to me. But I have found one tool, one tool that I could use for any repair situation, anything. I'll show it to you. It's right here. It's a, that's a screwdriver, I'm pretty sure. No, I got it in this pocket over here. It's, it's Framistan? <laughs> oh, here it is. I got it. Though. And they're all in speed dial. <laughs>
contestant number five, Long Me Lou. Miracle. Miracle. Hong Ming Lu. I'm a lucky guy. I was actually born with a silver chopstick in my mouth. <laughs> Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmaster, and honored ghosts. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Uh, I mean to say, fellow Ghostbusters. I was actually lucky even before I was born. When my mom conceived me, that was when China just started one child policy. There's a group of men who visit our house, try to persuade my mom to get rid of me because I already have a brother and a sister. I was in real danger. I call those men Terminator. <laughs> but my, my mom is not going to do that because she understands the rule of three in common. <laughs> <laughs> the third one is going to be the funny one. <laughs> Family needs a punchline. <laughs> so what she did is she would be real nice to these people, but adamantly put off whatever needs to be done. Eventually, I was born. So in this episode of my life, or pilot of my life, my mom taught me two things. One, be nice. Two, procrastination. <laughs> <laughs> Fast forward to today, I have two beautiful kids of my own. My son is eight, my daughter is six. During our vacation in China, my son asked me, why all the family went mad? That's just one kid. So I told him, both of them this one child policy. At the end, I told him, since we are Chinese, one day I have to get rid of one of them. They believed it. Take me. <laughs> just for the sake of joke. If I have to pick one to get rid of, probably my son. <laughs> His name is Tai Yan. In Chinese, it means open your mouth, speak your mind. Oh. Worst name ever. <laughs> <laughs> he opened his mouth, he mocked me. I overheard him talking to his friend. Do you know that my dad, he doesn't even know what is that. I'm so sad. Almost cried. <laughs> <laughs> the moment we were watching the TV program, fresh off the boat, Kanye was like, Dad, are you fresh off the boat? <laughs> he said, no, your dad came to this country by, by ship. Scholarship. <laughs>
the Toastmaster. All ballots have been collected. All right. Brandy. Brandy. <laughs> Brandy. 
70 story. <laughs> so how long have you been? Not too many people know that. I sure that's their problem, not ours. <laughs> How long have you been at Toastmasters? One year. One year? And what club are you representing? Little Toastmasters. I'm sorry? Little Toastmasters. And your Toastmasters educational level? I'm trying to finish my CC. Trying? I heard a puppet once say, there is no trunk. <laughs> so tell us when you're going to finish. <laughs> that, my friends, is the naked truth. <laughs> By your profile, you tell us that you enjoy learning, among other things, that are much more tangible. So I'm going to ask you about the learning. Tell us what kinds of learning you get to enjoy. How you do it, you go someplace. Tell us about learning. I'm a huge reader. Every morning for the last 20 plus years, I get up at 3.42. 3.42 exactly because that gives me two snoozes. And I'm on my bed by four if I need to. And 90 minutes to read, so I read every morning. I have five children, so that was the time that my house would be quiet. So that's when I started to do that. So I just read voraciously and that's my time. I'm having a real problem with two concepts here. <laughs> One is 3.42 in the morning, because I'm pretty sure that that went away when I got out of college. At that time, just stopped existing. And the other is five children. My mother had five children. So did my father, actually. But I can appreciate your desire to use your own time, and I congratulate you for that. All right. So on behalf of District 30, let me give you your certificate of participating. And Ha, ha, ha. 
Uh, it's good to have friends. Uh, it's from Shakespeare, Midsummer Night's Dream. And it doesn't necessarily mean particularly lovers or anything like that. It alludes to the fact that boasting, promoting yourself, and so on is fine, but you're really not as good as you think you are. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> so let's begin at the beginning. How long have you been in Toastmasters? Four years. Four years. See, now this is a guy that knows the number. <laughs> knows his man. Yep. And what club can we represent the time? X L. CC. You go work to do friend. <laughs> and I expect that we will see great things as you do. So when I was in graduate school, I did some very serious work on the linguistics of tongue twisters. And I have been waiting since 1974 to bring this one up in so if you'll indulge me, please tell our audience how one in Chinese would say 44 dead lions. <laughs> you also tell us through your profile that you admire when a thing is funny, search carefully for a hidden truth. So, let's take a very, very simple joke. Now take my wife, please. <laughs> What's the hidden truth? Hidden truth is all men think about that at one point. <laughs> He's right, and that was very good. <laughs> so, Hong Ming, on behalf of District 30, please to you this certificate of participation as well as a bit of John, you 
said something just a few moments ago, and that is they don't let you do all the, hand, the heavy handling. And I got to tell you, you did a fantastic job as contest host. Thank you. So on behalf of the district, I would like to present you the certificate of appreciation and my undying admiration for your work this evening. sitting with the outside, and I gotta have another question to talk about to you. So I would, at this point in time, now I'd like to call up one other individual, because as you know, running a contest is no easy task. Wouldn't you agree? Yes. And so for that individual that goes above and beyond to try and make the contest as awesome as this was, it requires energy, commitment, dedication, and passion. And I would like to call up our contest chair for this contest to the stage and be recognized, Ms. Patty Anderson. Yeah. So Patty, again, as I know that this takes a lot of work and a lot of commitment. You really went above and beyond. And so on behalf of the district, we would like to present you this little card and a gift on the inside for everything that you have done to make this contest great. up with their awards order, which means there's only one thing left to do. Announce the winners. And I'm going to speed through it to the extent where it's not going to be so long and suspenseful because I want to get to the karaoke can't try it. Just like all of you do. Yeah, baby. I hear that. That's good. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to announce you our third place winner for the Viewer Speech Contest, Ms. Francesca Pepia.
this adjourns our contest, I would now like to turn the, uh, the rest of the conference over back to our conference MC, Mr. Tom Keith. You do not have to leave this space in order to participate in the first ever karaoke triathlon. And the bad news is we're about to lock the door so no one can leave, so we're all here to participate in the first karaoke can triathlon. Just kidding. We'll lock one of the doors. Again, remember, we are going to have a time change, which means that the time you invest in listening to some of your fellow district Toastmasters sing, either on or off key or somewhere in between, you're getting it back tonight because we will move the clock back. So please relax and enjoy the next fun event. And we are going to be setting up now for the karaoke. So just give us a minute and then we will do that. And again, if you are leaving, when you do leave, make sure that you do turn in.